Bellasini. I'd like now to introduce Manhattan Public School parent, Mr. Noah Gottbaum, CEC president of CEC3. Thank you, Mona. As a parent of three public school kids, I'm here with 1.1 million public school parents behind me and behind us to say that it's not okay that a law that was set up to protect our kids is being broken. Our kids want the same things as Kathy Black's kids got, Joel Klein's kids got, Mike Bloomberg's kids got. They would never have stand, stood for someone who will manage their kids, someone who has no experience in education. The Kent School parents would no way accept that. Why should we? We have had nine years of a chancellor who comes out of the management, the business world. What do we see for it? Six out of 10 kids still aren't passing the education, the uh, English language test. Five out of 10 kids aren't passing the math test. Our special ed kids, of which I have two, only one out of 10 kids is passing those tests. Our English language learners, one out of 10. These are the results of the last 10 years. Now you say you want more of the same? Kathy Black, you may be a good manager, but what are you gonna do about fixing our system, improving our system, the educational piece? Our kids go to school not to be managed, they go there to learn. We want the same things, all of us. We want the same things that you got. We want our kids to have a rich curriculum. We don't want narrow focus on test taking. We want experienced teachers. We don't want our teachers being demonized and pushed on the run. We want small class sizes. And most of all, we want to be partners in this system, not competitors as we feel like we've been for the last 10 years. So I ask you, we would like to see an educator, a collaborator, someone with experience who understands that this is an education system, it's not a business. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gottbaum. I'd like to introduce Patricia Connolly, a public school parent from Brooklyn and former member of the Citywide Council on Special Education. Thank you, Mona. Um, <clears throat> I'll be brief. I'm humbled uh, to stand here with these parents and with these attorneys on this important day um, announcing our intent, oh, we have already done it, filed our petition, Article 278 petition, to block this waiver of Kathleen Black. Um, I'm here first as a parent of two beautiful children in Brooklyn, one with special needs. Um, I also want to say that it's particularly heartening to me that this action has been so led by special education parents who have suffered for years under mayoral control and this system largely in silence and largely ignored uh, by the Department of Ed. Today, I read in the Daily News that Kathleen Black could not think of one transformational teacher that inspired her. And this scares me uh, because we need transformational teachers in our lives and we have them in every one of our schools in this great city. I want to especially thank the brave Julie Cavanaugh, one of our petitioners from PS15 as our sole teacher petitioner. I had a transformational history teacher in high school in Belleville, New Jersey, just across the Hudson. She's retired now, her name is Ann Schneider and she not only 
help me become a better person and citizen, but all my siblings as well. And her impact resonates to today. And I say to the mayor, I say to Kathleen Black that we have those transformational teachers in our system, but you must support them and you must be guided and led by them. I, <laughs> thank you. I, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Owens. Again, I want to say thank you to everyone for coming today. Thank you to Senator Montgomery for helping us stay warm today. And I want to say that I am so proud, so proud to stand with these parents here and fight and ensure that each one of our children receives a quality education. Thank you. Questions? First of all, there are three lawsuits. Eric Snyder filed a lawsuit last Friday. Roger Wareham filed a lawsuit on Tuesday for two parents, one in the Bronx and one in Queens. And Herb and I on behalf of 13 parents <clears throat> and one teacher. So you now have 17 parents and one teacher uh, on three different lawsuits. Uh, yesterday when we filed our papers and we moved via what's called an order to show cause, we asked to consolidate our case, the third case, with the Eric Snyder case, which is the first case. When we prepared our papers, we were not aware that Roger Wareham had filed on Tuesday. And talking with Roger yesterday, he will most likely move the court to consolidate his case with Eric Snyder's case and this case. So you'll have three cases. The Attorney General will be representing the respondents. They have until December 20th to reply to the papers. And then we have, if we choose, the right to reply by December 22nd. And a hearing at 9.30 a.m. on December 23rd in Albany, the Supreme Court for Albany County is scheduled. But we don't know the judge at this point, and we expect that all three cases will be consolidated and argued that morning. And the importance of the timing is that current Chancellor Klein leaves office on December 31, and Kathleen Black is scheduled to become the Chancellor on January 3rd. I don't know who the Chancellor is on January <laughs> one and two. Uh, maybe Mario Rivana Rivera, Rivera is available. Uh, and, uh, and no one should be surprised at what I just said because it makes sense for judicial economy that you don't have three cases in the same court before three different judges. And so they'll be decided and hopefully there'll be a decision before December 31. Uh, so there will be some clarity with regard to this issue. We also believe that this is a case, at least based on our research that we've done at this point, and consulting with one of our experts who's in the audience, David Bloomfield, uh, who concurs with our research at this point, that this could be a case of first impression in the sense that perhaps no one before who got a waiver, that anyone who objected to the waiver actually went into the court. And again, one other point about that, the language about it's a done deal, uh, don't buy that. Uh, the courts have the power and the authority to nullify the decision by Commissioner Steiner. So as far as we're concerned, it ain't a done deal. <laughs>